Hello everyone and welcome back for another Battlegrounds video. Today we're going to be talking about quest returning to Battlegrounds. Before we get into the quest specifics, don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying this type of content because it helps me out making even more content for you guys. For those of you who are new to the game, quests are an extra game mechanic like buddies or dark moon prizes. Everyone is going to get a new set of quests on turn 4, which is the 6th gold turn. And you will choose one of your quests. There's a different quest reward for each of them. So you choose the quest that you like the most. And once you complete it, you're going to get a quest reward, which is kind of like an extra hero power. So let's see what new quests are coming into the game. They are adding three new quests with this update. Burn the evidence, sell nine minions, which seems like a pretty difficult quest to complete. Pressure the authorities, get your warband to 30 total attack, which is basically the Queen Ashara hero power, and then round up the suspects, destroy 18 enemy minions, which seems like the most appealing quest out of the three, seems very easy to complete. Keep in mind that these numbers are just the base numbers. The actual difficulties of the quest is going to depend on how much armor your hero has. So the more armor you have, the easier your quest is going to be. They are also bringing back all the other quests, which are just here. And they are removing one quest from the minion pool, which is unmask the culprit. Lose or tie three combats. This was arguably the least liked quest in the whole game it was really tricky and basically losing three combats means that you are dead so you could almost never pick this quest unless the requirement was to only lose two fights and even then it never felt good now on to the spicy part they are adding new quest rewards let's check them out we have icy sickle Avenge 1, give a minion in your hand plus 3 attack. This is only offered in games with undeads and or beasts in the lobby. Because undeads and beasts are the token tribes, so it makes sense to get an Avenge quest only if at least one of those is available. This quest reward seems really strong, especially considering the fact that we have more hand buff mechanics going on right now. So you could get even more value out of this quest if, for example, Murlocs are available. Because then not only you can get extra buffs, but you can also summon your minions right away with bear skill. Soul Pact. After you play a minion, give other minions of the same type plus one plus one. So this one seems wild. It seems so strong. This is what people wanted Nomi to be, pretty much. Not only buffs your board, but it's also going to buff your shops. It's kind of like Teotar and Nomi had a baby, and this is the result. This quest is going to be insanely, insanely strong. One of the better ones, although it will still depend on how easy it is to complete. But let's say you are playing a tribal hero like Flurgol, Shambhala, Patches. Like this is going to be your favorite quest. Stardy Shard. At the end of your turn, give your minions with taunt plus one plus two for each taunt minion you control. So this quest is basically build your own fort comp. And it also procs at the end of the turn, so it has synergy with Drakari. Seems like a very strong quest for Taunt Comp, which has also received some support in the latest patch, so I'm expecting this quest to be pretty good, unless if it's extremely hard to complete. Doppelganger's Locket. After each combat, discover a non-golden minion from your last opponent's warband. It keeps enchantments. Once again, this quest seems insane, it's basically the cat hero power, but you can't get golden minions out of it, although who cares, right? Because you're getting pretty insane cards out of this one. I'm expecting this quest to be on the higher hand of difficulties, but if it's not, it's gonna completely break the game. Seems insane. Timeline Acceleration. At the start of your turn, Get two accelerators that transform a minion into one from a tavern tier higher. So this is like um, Galakron Hero Power, but you don't get to choose. This quest looks weak at first glance, but if it's easy to complete, this quest is going to be very, very strong. You can start evolving your own minions and get six drops early on, so you can get direction with stuff like Tetis, Boogie Monster, so yeah, it seems like a really strong quest. 
as long as you can complete it very quickly. Invigorating conch, I guess. I don't know. I've never seen that word before. When you buy a minion, give its stats to a random friendly minion. So this is like a reverse anima bribe. It seems weaker than anima bribe because with the bribe, you could just keep stacking minions onto each other and just buying them from the shop. It's still a very powerful quest, especially if you have ways to buff your shop or if you are playing Mutanus or Vol'jin, because then you can just get a bunch of stats for cheap and swap them back in the shop and do some crazy shenanigans. Boom Squad. Avenge 3 deal 10 damage to the highest health enemy minion. This quest is basically a bigger version of Meccano Tank. Instead of dealing 5 damage upon Avenge 2, it deals 10, but you need to get Avenge 3. At the same time though, you don't need to have it on your board, so it can't be sniped, and you have more space to play more summoning synergies. So yeah, I'm expecting this quest to be very very strong, depending on how easy it is to get. Because for those of you who didn't play back in the days when this was a card, if you got this tank early on, you basically will win the next 2 or 3 fights. It will fell off in the late game, but it's an extremely strong tool during the mid game. And it being a quest makes it also better in the late game because of the reason that I previously listed. It's not a minion that you need to keep on your board, so it's just basically a passive that you just get for playing the game. Which can ping your opponent divine shields or even kill their minions altogether. So it seems like a very solid quest. Divine Armor. At the end of your turn, give the leftmost minion in your hand plus 6 plus 6 and divine shield. So this is very similar to Red End, but instead of giving your minion plus 12 plus 12, it's gonna get the divine shield and half the stats. Which in certain situations could be better or could be worse. Early on though, I will say that having divine shield is probably worth more than having an extra plus 6 plus 6. So I'm expecting this quest to be very strong, just like Red End was back in the days. Map the unknown. After you play a minion of a type you don't control, give a friendly minion of each type plus 2 plus 1. So this is a menagerie quest. At some point during the first buddy meta, the Queen Tog Waggle buddy basically had this effect. And people will just stay on tier 1, keep cycling Selemental to buff the other tribes on the board. So are we gonna have that again? Maybe. Because you need to be on tier 1 on turn 4 when you get your quest. Which is usually not what you wanna do. But maybe some people will go out of their way and forcefully stay on tier 1 just to try and get this quest. We'll see. Blood Sock Tom. Minions in Bob's Tavern cost 2. Dev comment, this will be one of our rarer rewards. So these are very exciting rewards. Basically, you become Milaus Mana Storm. Although, first of all, it's going to be a rare reward, which usually also means it's going to be difficult to complete, since this is a very powerful effect. Even though this quest looks really good, it's probably going to be on the weaker hand of quests, because just by looking at the other quest, the meta is just gonna be extremely tempo based. So if your opponents are already getting like plus 10 plus 10 or even plus 15 15 stats every turn passively for like two or three turns before you get this quest, you're not gonna have enough time to come back and catch up on stats before they kill you. Scepter of Guidance. Bob's Tavern always offer two minions when refreshed. So basically when you get offered this quest, it's gonna say like you always get two dragons or two elementals or two pirates and whatnot. This is a pretty strong effect. Basically you get to become Isera, but twice as good because you get two minions instead of only one. This is both an upside and a downside because once you get to tier six, then you are gonna see less minions in your shops because normally you will see six minions. Now you're just gonna see five random minions plus two tribal minions. So it makes it less likely for you to get your tech cards like Leroy Jenkins and Mantid Queen, Tunnel Blaster, whatever you may need. Either way, this is a pretty interesting quest. I don't know how strong it's gonna be. It's gonna heavily depend on how easy it is to complete and most importantly, what tribe you are getting out of it. 
because I'm expecting this quest to be especially good with Murlocs, Elementals and Pirates because they have a lot of synergy within each other and they benefit from playing other Elementals or other Murlocs and stuff like that. But in most cases, I don't think this quest is going to be too good unless if it's, once again, extremely easy to complete. But I doubt that's going to be the case because this is a pretty strong effect. Transmogrification. At the end of your turn, set your lowest health minions stats equal to your highest health minion stats. From the way it's worded, it's just gonna copy the whole stats of the minion. That's what I assume, right? Because it says your lowest health minion stats. The stats are all the stats, not just the health. Basically, with this quest, at the end of your turn, you just get to duplicate your biggest minion stats. And this is an insane effect. Obviously, you need to find ways to build up a big minion, but we have cards like Peggy and Smogger in the game, so that shouldn't be too hard. Or you can just keep stacking magnetics onto the same minion. So depending on how easy it is to complete this quest, it's going to be terrifying. Because having the flexibility to buy any minion and have it be your biggest minion in the late game, it's proven to be one of the strongest things you can do. Unless if the wording is confusing and then it only copies the health, because then the quest will be way worse. Endless Blood Moon. Your blood gems give an extra plus two plus two. At the start of your turn, add two to your hand. This is only offered in games with quillboards in the lobby. This is an interesting quest. Because compared to the value that you get out of other quests, it doesn't help you a lot. Unless if you can also have other synergies on top of it, like Chargla and stuff like that. I'm curious to see how this one is going to play out. Because this quest could be like one of the sleeper really good quests. Or it could just be too low value and therefore one of the worst ones. When quests initially return, this new quest will be offered at twice the regular appearance rate. Then the rate will be adjusted so that every quest shows up in the same percentage a few weeks after the launch. Most of the old quests are coming back, but a few of the old ones have been removed from the pool. Teal Tiger Sapphire. Minions in Bob's Tavern have plus one plus one for each time it was refreshed this turn. Speaking of low impact quests, like this was arguably the lowest impact quest in the previous quest meta. There was the insanely high roll scenario in which you will get a Felbat together with this quest. And then you could basically just roll minus 10 every turn and buff all your demons for a crazy amount of stats. So I'm glad to see it gone. Then we have Staff of Origination. Start of combat, give your minions plus 12 plus 12. This was... Not too bad of a quest, but it was pretty boring, so I'm glad they're getting rid of it. And then Blood Goblet. At the end of your turn, give your rightmost minion attack equal to your missing health. And it makes sense for them to remove this one. Back then, heroes had 40 health and a little less armor. Now they are down to 30 health with more armor, which makes this quest almost worthless. That's it for the quest. They're gonna come out tomorrow usually at 7 p.m. CET. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and hopefully quests are going to be much more fun than the previous time. Bye!